So this is our last lecture on thermodynamics for this course. And then we'll move on here to starting to discuss about fluid mechanics here in the next few lectures. So uh, we're going to finish up our talk on the second law of thermodynamics here. Uh, next thing I'd like to define are what are we going to be calling reversible and irreversible processes. Now, um, reversible processes are basically processes that don't have losses occurring in them. All right, and they're kind of a model that we're going to be looking at here to try to model actual systems after. And you may think, well, why do we bother with them if actual processes are irreversible? So in irreversible cases, we have friction. We have things that cause losses. You know, th when things move quickly, we have energy losses that occur. We may have frictions. We may have other things occurring, um, but reversible we don't have. It's kind of an ideal case. We can't ever have that occurring in reality. But despite that, it's interesting. So I like one of the illustrations that the textbook gives too, is that it says that, you know, it's kind of an ideal process that we're looking at. It's similar to if you're thinking about Mr. and Mrs. Wright. You know, when you're single and you're looking for somebody who's going to be a good uh, partner for you. You have Mr. and Mrs. Wright that you have an ideal case for, but if you hold that case uh, as a standard, probably you'll or you'll definitely never meet anybody who's perfect. But it's a standard that you have, and similarly we do that in thermodynamics, where this is a standard we can't ever reach it, but at least it know, lets us know our limit. Okay, where uh, how high could we go? And what we're going to learn here is we can't go up to 100%, okay? You would think, well, 100% is our limit. That's not the case, okay? 100% is not the limit. Now, let me talk into a little bit about irreversibilities before I get into that 100% not being the limit. Irreversibilities, you know, we includes friction. If we have unrestrained expansion, uh, mixing of two fluids, heat transfer, uh, that occurs here, you know, this would be irreversible. We can't go uh, in, oops, we can't go in the other direction, right? Um, so there's several different irreversibilities that we can't just turn back to a way they originally was. So keep that in mind. Irreversible processes are what we actually deal with. Reversible processes are just the opposite of this. We don't have friction. We don't have unrestrained expansion. We're assuming kind of an ideal case uh, that we're dealing with. There's different types of reversible processes. So we have internally reversible, externally reversible, and when both internal and external portions of our uh, analysis are uh, irreversible, it could be totally irreversible system. So this is just some terminology that we may use as we go through here. Now the kind of the king of all irreversible processes is the Carnot cycle, okay? And it's something that we compare, and actually there's a lot of other cycles we compare to, but this kind of is the most famous uh, to look at and to compare different systems at. Now what is the Carnot cycle? Well, the Carnot cycle looks at this exact cycle that you see here, all right? So imagine here if we have a piston cylinder device, and as we first have a energy source that's hot, so we have something that's hot transferring heat to this piston here. Now, as soon as uh, this temperature increases, we have an expansion of our, I'm sorry, not as the heat is transferred, we expand, right? Or expand, this is causes this to expand, we're adding uh, energy to the system. Then, as we remove this energy source, maybe we make this adiabatic, okay? We have an adiabatic uh, expansion process as this system uh, begins to cool. Then let's say we have, we then add a low energy sink all of a sudden to this side of the um, cycle, causing or and also compressing this as we do that. Then we add insulation uh, uh, further 
compressing this, uh, causing the temperature to increase in this chamber. Now if we looked at all this in a cycle, so here's a PV diagram of that, we would have our different phases of our cycle illustrated here where we have our heat added uh, between cycles one and, or points one and two and we have our heat rejected between parts three and four. Now uh, since this is a reversible process we could easily go the other way okay so this is when we talk about Carnot heat engines we can talk about them going in both ways when we talk about uh, it going in the opposite way that's the Carnot refrigeration cycle and we'll talk about both of those today so um, one of the things that of course I think it may be kind of obvious to you guys is that these reversible heat engines have a higher efficiency so it's able to convert heat into usable work at a higher rate or better than the irreversible engine. So if you have something with friction and different losses, the efficiency of this system is going to be lower than our reversible system. Another thing to point out here from this slide is that different engines, our reversible engines operating between two reservoirs will have the same efficiency. Okay, so um, this, these reversible engines here are really dependent on what the temperature is of this low reservoir and the temperature of this high reservoir and that's an interesting point that uh, that Carnot puts puts together so remember back in our previous lecture we talked about that we have to if we obtain heat here okay we have to reject some of that heat to our low temperature reservoir so some of it has to be put out as waste heat okay it, just to function just to get our cycle to function now what is the limit so how much can we what's the lowest amount of heat that we can waste in our system so here you'll see that in this case 30% is, is what we were uh, wasting out of our system and we're able the maximum is 70 percent that we could use in this particular system so you guys see that instead of looking at it in terms of a hundred percent we can look at it in terms of what's the maximum theoretical value now how did I get this number 70 percent well it goes back to using what's called the temperature the thermodynamic temperature scale okay and this is just a fancy diagram here but what the temperature scale is going to allow us to do it's going to allow us to express these heat transfer values how much heat is are we supplying here in terms of temperatures okay if we convert these Q's remember in our previous lecture we talked about measuring the efficiency of something in terms of Q what if we converted those Q's to temperatures okay and if we perform an analysis so here this is just a diagram showing that this reversible heat engine has the same work output as these two heat engines so it really depends on what is Q1 and what is Q3 what is Q1 and what is Q3 this intermediate process doesn't really add or take anything away from this because because really what matters is that we are operating between these two thermal reservoirs so we might as well just look at an analysis that's more simplified if we're going to look at one so what we're going to introduce now is a temperature scale the uh, temperature scale used for the Carnot heat engines what instead of using these heat transfer rates and your book goes through a really good de definition and derivation of how we go from uh, these QHs to these temperatures but we can show that these high and low temperature reservoirs can be equivalent to these uh, to the temperature of those reservoirs and whenever we deal with these temperatures these must always be in absolute scale so whenever we have our solving and using a Carnot cycle for our analysis we always have to use Kelvin temperature uh, for our analysis okay so let's look at the Carnot heat engine okay we talked a little bit about it we have our cycle that we interact with and what's important are the temperature hot temperature and the low temperature reservoir okay so any heated heat engine uh, we can replace uh, our 
QL over QH for our Carnot cycle with TL over TH. So this makes our analysis pretty easy to check. So in other words, if somebody comes up to you and they claim to have a certain efficiency engine, you can do a check. You can do a Carnot efficiency check. You, if they say, you know what, my efficiency, first of all, if they say my efficiency of my engine or my cycle is 100%, of my heat engine it's 100 percent you know it's a lie right because we talked about that the Calvin Planck statement says that we have to be able to reject some of that waste heat now the Carnot heat engine allows us to know what's the minimum amount of heat that we can reject for the highest efficiency so this Carnot cycle gives us the maximum efficiency we could obtain because it's reversible right we don't have losses we don't have things that are uh, consuming energy in this system so the maximum amount of efficiency we could get in this Carnot cycle is 70 percent so if you know it's greater than set if it's greater than 70 percent it's impossible to achieve that and in actuality if the maximum is 70 percent and we achieve 45 it's not that bad right 45 out of 70 compared to if we were looking at 45 out of 100 now that's a really big difference right looking at it in terms of this uh, Carnot analysis okay now can we use degree C for this analysis remember I already said no we can't we always have to use Kelvin okay we're looking at Kelvin in our all of our analysis of these Carnot heat engines Another thing that we can talk about is the quality of energy. So the higher the temperature of our high temperature reservoir here, the higher the thermal efficiency of our system can achieve. Okay, so as this goes up, this thermal efficiency goes up as well. Okay, so when we talk about a system, we typically try to increase the temperature of our system okay by increasing the temperature of our system we can increase the maximum amount of thermal efficiency that we can achieve now what are the, some of the problems associated with that well one of the problems of going up to 2000 Kelvin obviously are material issues right we can't just go up to 2000 degrees Kelvin uh, without melting everything typically okay without some special really special material considerations so uh, that's one limitation we have but keep in mind that our goal is to have a very high temperature in order to have a very high possible thermal efficiency if we're operating in the low temperature range the maximum thermal efficiency that we could have is going to be low Finally, let's talk about the Carnot refrigerator. Now, we talked the Carnot refrigeration pump is basically this cycle. It's the Carnot heat engine pump in reverse, okay? And we could do a similar analysis for that. And this provides us with a maximum coefficient of performance value that we could obtain um, uh, in practice, okay? It's always going to be a lower value um, than uh, what the optimal or irreversible uh, value is okay so as you imagine the so here let's see uh, how do you increase the coefficient of performance of a Carnot heat or heat pump how do you increase it well as you can imagine and what the next slide illustrates is that by just like there's a quality for a heat engine if we increase the temperature of that heat engine we can get a higher possible thermal efficiency for our uh, coefficient of performances um, the TL becomes important instead of TH right so the coefficient of performance of refrigerators and heat pumps decrease as TL decreases so as we have a colder source here the efficient the maximum efficiencies of these are going to be limited okay so it's kind of the opposite of the Carnot heat engine and we're going to use these as kind of a check you can always check somebody to make sure that they are not uh, lying to you okay you can say oh you know now that a maximum amount of uh, efficiency 
is not necessarily 100% or it can't be 100% for these for these different systems because we have to have these either uh, warm temperature or low temperature environment to lose some of our or distribute some of our heat to in these cycles. So we'll continue on with our discussion on uh, fluid mechanics in our next lectures.